Well, I think we're live. Let's just go with the flow. Welcome to Direct Mail Monday, December 7th, 2020. Steve Cypress here. We're going to keep it short and simple today. I got two pieces to share with you, both teaching the same lesson. And as always, the lessons taught from mail pieces that land in my personal mailbox or my business mailbox are appropriate for all kinds of advertising and marketing, not just direct mail. This works for email, social media, anything you want to use. Um, and in this case, it's the lesson of if nobody reads your message, then they can't take action on it, right? So all the time, effort, and cost, and money, and everything you put into your message on the inside. Ooh, what am I going to sell? How much am I going to sell it for? What am I going to say? How much am I going to pay a copywriter to write it all? Am I going to use images or what color paper? None of that matters, of course, if the piece doesn't get open. Nothing you write in an email matters if that doesn't get open. Nothing matters in a video if it doesn't get clicked on and watched. Nothing matters in a social media post if people don't stop scrolling through their feed and read it. So you want to catch their attention, and the way to do that with direct mail is with the envelope. So here's one example from one of my favorites. We bring them up time and again. It's the old AARP, the uh, insurance selling company, under the guise of posing as some kind of a uh, organization for uh, uh, elderly people. But they're always selling insurance, so I have no doubt that this is selling me some kind of insurance. But uh, <laughs> That is a ridiculous envelope. But, you know, this is some of the stuff maybe you can use. Uh, these are some silly warning stuff. U.S. Mail Section 1701 provides for a punishment of the $2,000 fine and or five years imprisonment for obstruction of the delivery of this letter. I'm sure it does, but what kind of nonsense is that? It's In other words, it's just to make you think this is something really important and official. And then there's a seal. Oh, it's time sensitive. Open immediately. Oh, and look at the... The, the, the indicia up here, oh, it's got the USA and the Eagle. So this is clearly something important and official looking and all that. And like, really now, let's open this up. Go to one of the desk drawers and get out my trusty Rhino letter opener for all you Rhino fans. There we go. And uh, let's check out what's in here. Because it doesn't really matter uh, unless you get people to open it. In this case, if people really think, and, and they wouldn't send this stuff out uh, unless... They had already tested it, and it works, unless I happen to be part of the test among, you know, 50 million Americans they could send this stuff out to. Not likely. It's likely they already tested it, and it worked. And so let's see what's inside. Well, it's a business reply mail to Safeguard Estate and Financial in sunny Scottsdale, Arizona, on Hayden Road, uh, which is right by the Costco that we like to go to, no doubt and all kinds of other businesses. Let me cross out our home address here just for privacy. Oh, and by the way, first tip off, of course, that it's pure nonsense, is that it's addressed to my mom, who passed away nearly six years ago. But as the administrator of the estate, I still received mail for her, I guess. And we have, uh, oh, so is it not, it seems like it's not really insurance. It's free information on probate, wills, and trusts ironically sent to someone who passed away six years ago. But it's finding some kind of study about probate, state settlement. So I stand corrected. Uh, for once, they're not attempting to sell me insurance. They're attempting to sell me estate planning. And so uh, I guess I'm supposed to drop this back into the mail after I just check off right here. Yes, I'd like more information. This is an effective way to do this kind of marketing to seniors who like direct mail, but of course in the modern world, you see this all the time and hopefully you use it all the time, online, on your website, people come to it, hopefully you have some kind of uh, an offer for them to give you their information. In this case, it could be just whatever this is. We have a study on such and such. We have a report on this. If you are a lawyer, if you're in real estate, then you have a report on how to get the best selling price for your home or how to find the home your dreams to buy. Whatever it is, you put that free report, and people will give you their name, email, phone number, in this case, age, well, they have my name, or my mom's name, and address. And so they want phone number. That's required. Age and spouse's age, apparently not acquired, required. 
but they want some information. They want me to request information, and then I'll be forever on their mailing list, receiving all kinds of stuff about wills, estates, trusts, and all kinds of other things that they know people that are interested in that of a certain age are also going to want, namely insurance. Um, and they'll also sell uh, my name, or in this case, my mom's name, address, information to other companies looking to rent lists and buy lists to market to the same people. So uh, you can do the same. I don't, uh, I don't engage in selling my list. Anyone that ever opts in their information is 100% secure and private forever. But a lot of companies make a lot of money selling and renting their list, which of course we make a lot of money buying and renting their list from them and marketing to them. But anyway, I just thought that was interesting. It's the old, let's get you to open the envelope with the official looking tactic. Then once we got to the inside, we got the old, we're not trying to say anything, just making it real simple. Post is paid, reply postcard, just check off the box and we'll start marketing to you like crazy. Now here's a example number two. This one, very interesting. It was all, again, I crossed out our home address for privacy, but uh, it's hand address. That is not some kind of handwritten font. That is actual handwritten address from someone no one's ever heard of. Uh, Ian M dash O P, <laughs> whatever that means. And uh, my beautiful <laughs> Michelle, I showed, I said, I'm going to do this piece tonight on, uh, on the rest of the Monday. She was like, oh, who's that from? Ian who? Like, see, this works. This stuff works on a lot of people who go, wow, Ian who? I got to open it. I'm like, look, it's addressed to our neighbor. So <laughs> as, as personal as he's attempting to make it look with a, a live stamp, that's not an indicia, that's an actual stamp and handwritten the whole thing. But you kind of blow it when you write our neighbor, then it's clear you're just getting names out of a phone book or off a map or you know whatever. And uh, so let's see whatever this is all about. Uh, but clearly it's uh, nothing personal. It's not some friend of ours named Ian that we long forgot uh, <laughs> that has something we actually care about. Uh, and generally, I wouldn't, oh, look at that. He carries the whole thing through. Got to love it. But in this case, this is uh, copy. But he's handwriting a whole note here to us, the old handwritten note. Um, I suggest you do this on lined paper, preferably yellow lined paper. It'll seem more real. And uh, you could actually, uh, there are companies, there are services that you can pay them very little bit, and they will actually have people handwrite these out. Housewives, unemployed students will make a couple of bucks to like sit there all day and, and handwrite signatures. So, dear neighbor, my name is Ian, and blah, 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 sincerely Ian. And then he's got a little brochure here. So, way to go, Ian. He may he carried all through the whole personal thing, dear neighbor, blah blah blah. The only problem is, like I said, you got dear neighbor. So if you really want to do that right, you rent the list, you get the names. Even if you had to open the phone book for crying out loud and write the name, it's gonna work a heck of a lot better. In this case, there's no way I would open that piece of nonsense up, except that I wanted to share it with you here on Direct Mail Monday. Normally, my beautiful wife, Michelle, will go, Ian, who, who's that? And I go, yeah, no one knows it. See ya. Well, I wonder what the OP is. Maybe it says it somewhere in the letter, but the letter's already in the circular file, never to be seen again, unless he decides to send me a next one or to one other of his dear neighbors that he loves so much and doesn't know. And anyway, there are two ways you can, uh, uh, two strategies you can use on your envelope to get it opened up. Use this, use something like it. If you want more help customizing something for yourself, this or anything else to do with advertising, marketing, sales, the getting of money part of your business, you take care of the doing and delivering whatever you do. Uh, I can help you with how to get more people to pay you to do it. You can go to helpfromsteve.com and I'll help you out. You can also be back here wherever you're watching this, reading it or listening to it. Tomorrow on Topical Tuesday, I'll have pull something out of the news, share some business lessons on that tomorrow. And with that, we bring today's message to a close. Thanks for being here today, and I'll catch you tomorrow 